President, uh, as we all know by now, last Friday, President Biden submitted an emergency funding request to Congress. As we all expected, it calls for funding to support Israel as it defends itself against the terrorist organization known as Hamas, a proxy for Iran. It also asks for funding for Ukraine, which continues its heroic defense against a Russian invasion. It requests funding to strengthen security in the Indo-Pacific to help our friends and allies combat increasingly aggressive threats from China. And notably, President Biden has also called for emergency funding to help address the crisis at the southern border. At face value, this shouldn't be surprising. After all, the Biden border crisis has been raging for nearly three years, and somehow it continues to get worse every day. Last month, Customs and Border Protection logged nearly 270,000 270,000 migrant crossings at the southern border, making it the busiest month on record. In total, nearly 2.5 million migrants have entered the United States since last fiscal year, or during the last fiscal year. That's another record. We don't have the resources or the personnel to deal with this influx in what we all should hope would be an efficient, fair, and humane way. And that needs to change. First of all, we need to wrest immigration out of the hands of the cartels who care nothing about the people who smuggle individuals into the United States for money, a lot of money. It's a very profitable business. And there are also their affiliated cartels that are smuggling the drugs into the United States that killed 108,000 Americans last year alone. That's also the source of a lot of money for these criminal organizations, again, who care nothing about the life or welfare of individuals, either the migrants or people in the United States. And that's what happens when you outsource immigration controls to criminal organizations, as the Biden administration has done. The president's funding request does include a few items that are definitely needed, starting with additional Border Patrol agents. Personnel shortages have impacted all of our missions at the border, including those that have nothing to do with migration. More Border Patrol agents would help fill the gaps and alleviate the strain on frontline law enforcement. But this change is meaningless unless we address the polygraph examination, which is a major barrier for hiring. Just to be clear, the policy on passing a polygraph varies so much from agency to agency, but currently the policy employed by the Border Patrol has basically made it impossible to fill the quota of Border Patrol agents that we seek to hire. The administration's also asked for 375 new immigration judge teams. There's no doubt that our immigration courts are drowning under a rapidly growing case backlog. In 2020, before President Biden took office, there were just under 1.3 million cases pending in the immigration courts. But thanks to the administration's current policies, the backlog has now doubled to 2.6 million cases. Simply adding more judges will be an exercise in futility unless we also address the pull factors or the policies that are causing the backlog to grow at such an alarming pace. I'm reminded of something the former chief of the Border Patrol said amidst another migration surge. In the summer of 2019, border crossings were on the rise, although they paled in comparison to what we're seeing now. But then Chief Carla Provost testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee and talked about what it would take to fix the situation. She said, we cannot address this crisis by shifting more resources. It's like holding a bucket, under a bucket under a faucet. And it doesn't matter how many buckets you have if you don't turn the water off. The President's request for emergency funding is a bucket, a relatively small one, but it does nothing to stop the flow. The only way to do that is by deterrence. And the only way to achieve deterrence is by delivering consequences for entering the country illegally. 
We need to send a message to the people who have no legitimate reason to remain in the United States that if they come, they will not be able to stay. President Biden does not seem to understand that. In his emergency funding request, he asked Congress to provide for non-custodial housing for migrants in expedited removal proceedings. This is a process that allows law enforcement to quickly remove migrants who have no legitimate reason to remain in the United States. I'm talking about expedited removal now. The idea that we would release migrants who are on the verge of being deported is patently absurd and just shows the chaos and confusion and the lack of any logical coherence in the Biden border policy. Anyone who believes that these individuals would come back for their removal hearing is living in an alternate reality. This would constitute yes, yet another massive pull factor attracting people to make that journey to the border. President Biden also called on Congress to expand, expand the so-called lawful pathways his administration created. But to be clear, there's nothing lawful about these pathways. The administration once again has usurped Congress's authority and paroling entire classes of migrants into the United States. Parole is a technical term, basically means to release them, even if they're not claiming asylum, and which the Biden administration continues to do on a massive scale, simply release people into the United States. This is, unsurprisingly, a violation of the Immigration and Nationality Act. And any effort to expand these so-called pathways is a non-starter in Congress. We will not legitimize these unauthorized programs and provide an even bigger incentive for migrants to make the dangerous journey to the border. We need to discourage people who have no legitimate claim to come to the United States this way, not bolster an incentive package. In my view, there are two broad goals that need to be met in order to address this crisis in a meaningful way. First, we need to end catch and release. So far, the administration has sent a message to people around the world that if you enter the United States illegally, there's a good chance you'll be able to stay, which in turn only encourages more people to come. Just show up at the border, say the magic words, and then disappear into the great American heartland. We need to revise this message and make it clear that only those with a legitimate claim can remain in the United States. Ending catch and release is the most effective way to do that. Number two, the administration must remove people who are determined, who have been determined to have no legal right to enter or remain in the United States. The Biden administration has proven it does not take this responsibility seriously. Last year, or in 2021, arrests and deportation by ICE, known as Immigration and Customs Enforcement, reached an all-time low. So not only are more people coming into the country than we've ever seen before, but fewer people are going out who have no legitimate basis to stay here. In 2021, the agency carried out fewer than 60,000 deportations that year, the lowest number on record by a long shot. The following, num following year, the number of deportations increased slightly, but not nearly enough to make an impact and certainly not enough to discourage people from continuing to come illegally to enter the United States. Apprehensions are at record highs, deportations are at historic lows, and it's clear that this is all part of somebody's plan. Despite having every tool at its disposal, the administration's trying to move a mountain with a teaspoon. It's doing just enough to make some people think they're doing something meaningful without having any real impact. While I'm glad President Biden seems to have awakened to the fact that the status quo at the border is unsustainable, his emergency funding request shows he is still absolutely disinterested in solving this crisis. He's proven once again that he doesn't care about deterring illegal immigration. He doesn't care about delivering consequences to individuals who break our laws. And he doesn't care about solving this crisis. He merely wants to manage the flow, not stop it. 
This is not a serious proposal. Some of the proposed spending is actually harmful, and the positive aspects are just window dressing. The president needs to get serious about the border, and what he sent us is not serious. One thing is certain, the Senate will not rubber stamp his paltry border request. You can be certain of that. This emergency funding bill will absolutely, will absolutely include more funding to address the border crisis, but this is about more than funding, it's about the appropriate policies. We need real changes, which produce real consequences, real ways to turn off the flow of illegal immigration and enrich, continuing to enrich the criminal organizations that smuggle people and drugs across our border. Later this week, I'm eager to talk with some of the true experts on the border crisis about the current challenges they're facing. Senator Cruz and I are leading a visit, another visit, to the Rio Grande Valley, and I'm glad that Senator Ricketts, Senator Lee, and Senator Barrasso will join us. We're going to spend some time talking to the Border Patrol agents who actually work on the ground, as well as the customs officers who deal with the consequences of the administration's failed policies day in and day out. We'll tour the border to see how virtually anyone, from vulnerable migrant children to dangerous drug cartel members to people on the terrorist watch list, are able to enter the United States. And we'll hear from state officials local law enforcement and landowners about the broader impact of the border crisis in communities across our state. It's going to be a busy two, be two busy and informative days. And as always, I'm grateful to the men and women who take the time to meet with us who are doing the hard job. It would be nice if they knew that this administration had their back, but they are demoralized despite the fact that they continue to do their job day in and day out because they realize that the Biden border policies are designed to fail. Their insight, however, is invaluable to my work here in the Senate, and there couldn't be a more important time to hear from the frontline experts who know about this crisis and how to solve it better than anyone else. I especially commend my colleagues from Wyoming, Utah, and Nebraska for taking the time to make this important trip and their willingness to hear from Senator Cruz and my constituents on the front lines of this issue. Mr. President, I yield the floor.